Hi, in this video we're going to show how to download and install Nutanix X-Ray. So first of all, head to nutanix.com forward slash x-ray and you'll get redirected to this page. Just click on the link here and it will take you to the download page. If you're not logged in, you may have to log into the Nutanix portal site. So it's going to show us uh, a bunch of different images that we can download. We're going to be downloading the QCAL file for AHV. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the download link. And then we're going to pop over to our PRISM page. So this is my Nutanix management console. And I'm going to add that image into my cluster so I can create VMs from it. So I've gone to image configuration, created an image. I'm going to give it the name X-Ray Server. Uh, it's going to just be the name of my image. I could create many X-ray servers from this if I wanted to. So we just fill in these details here. And then where it says um, image source, that's where I'm going to paste in the URL that I copied from the portal page just uh, a second ago. So there we go. There's a URL. We'll save that. And what's going to happen now is x-ray sorry the prism is going to start downloading that x-ray image from the portal site and it will be available for me to create uh, images from so first thing it has to do is just basically reach out over to the internet and download those files how quickly that uh, gets done is just going to be depending on how fast your internet connection is um, i think i sped this up a little bit here because my internet connection between my lab in the uh, in the building and the outside world isn't very quick. So anyway, it's downloading the image now and uh, it's here. Great. So next, what we have to do is now go and create an X-ray VM that we can log into and start running tests from. So to do that, I just go to the VM page and I create a VM, and I'm going to base this VM on the image that I just uploaded into my cluster. So for my X-ray instance, I'm going to call it X-ray instance. Give it a description. I'm going to give this for vCPU. It doesn't really need a lot, but it doesn't really hurt to give it more. Uh, it doesn't need a lot of memory, but 8 gig is fine. And now what I'm doing here is I'm telling the X-ray VM I'm creating what image to use as a boot disk, basically. So I've chosen X-ray server. That's just the thing I downloaded previously. And the last thing I have to do is add a network adapter so that I can actually talk to this thing from the outside world. So uh, add that, save it off. So now I've created my X-Ray VM on my Nutanix cluster. And the next thing I have to do is power it up. So let's go ahead and do that. This thing will power up, uh, then I need to wait to get an IP address, and then all, all I do then is point my browser at the IP address of my X-Ray instance, and I'll be talking to the, to the X-Ray server, basically. And once that comes up, the very first thing I'm going to have to tell the X-Ray server is what is the cluster that I'm trying to test it on. So, okay, the X-ray server is up now. Let's go and try and copy that IP address. It's a little bit cumbersome, but we'll grab this and point the browser at it. So let's create a new tab, pop that in. Yep, had that last doc tab there, I didn't quite copy. All right, cool. So yeah, it's a self-signed certificate. So we get all this junk from Firefox Yeah, do whatever you got to do there. Okay, so because we store passwords to clusters and so on in X-Ray, we have to protect that data. We won't want to leave the credentials unprotected. So we protect that store of the credentials with a, um, with a password. So uh, do whatever you've got to do to uh, make peace with yourself with these users and um, accept them if you feel cool. So here we are. Now we're talking to X-Ray. Fantastic. About time. So yeah, here we go, we're going to add the target. So a target is just another name for the cluster or the thing I'm going to test. In this case, I'm testing an HV cluster, so I'm going to leave the management type as prism, and I'm just going to give this target a name. Call it Nutanix cluster to test, it doesn't matter, it's just a, a label basically. I'm not going to be doing any IPMI, so no failure testing, so I can set that to none. And then what I have to put in here in this prism config, I'm just pointing it to the virtual IP address of my uh, 
prism uh, management. And if this was V center, or if I was testing a V sphere cluster, whether I was Nutanix or V SAN or whatever, I would at that point I would actually point that at my V center. But anyway, here I am. It's found out some information about my cluster, and at this point I can decide what container I want to test and what network I want to use. You may have seen um, zero conf on there. That's another thing we can use, but in this case, I'm going to just use DHCP. So a nice thing that X-Ray does is it's going to reach out to that cluster and make sure that it can at least provision VMs and talk to them. If you've done any kind of performance testing before, one of the things that trips you up is you, you, know, you put together your performance test and you're ready to go and rock and there's some kind of problem with your management environment you can't even talk to the vm so x-ray has this real nice feature where it doesn't do a performance test but what it does is it sets up a vm powers them up make sure that they can get an ip address make sure that x-ray server can talk to them and once that's done as long as that completes you know you're in a, in a good shape to go and start doing your performance test and you're not trying to debug connectivity issues at the same time you're trying to debug your performance test. So I, I use this all the time and I found it really uh, helpful. So yep, this all looks good. Click done. Okay, so now we can go and do a performance test. So we have our cluster target set up and the kind of canonical thing to do is of course run the, uh, we're interested in storage. So we're gonna run a four corners test. So that's random read, random write, sequential read, sequential write. And uh, we don't want this to take forever, so we just run it for 60 seconds. We point at the cluster that we set up, and X-Ray enqueues that test. What I could do here is I could select a whole bunch of different tests, or I could run 10 of the same tests and just queue them up. But right now I've just queued up a single test and I'm running it. There's nothing else in the queue, so X-Ray is now executing that benchmark for me. So the first thing it does is it's going to instantiate the VMs that it wants to test. So it does this fresh from every time. So we have very good test hygiene here. So it's cloning these VMs out. It powers them on. Obviously, it has to wait for IP. And then once those VMs are up and running, X-ray will come. The X-ray server will connect to those VMs, and it will start doing the work. So the first thing it does is it kind of pre it precedes the VM so that we don't have just empty data on there. Some people call that salting or seasoning or whatever. And then the next thing we do in this case is we, we start to warm the cache. So we do this for every thing that we test on. So we've warmed up the caches and now we are doing the first of our four corner workload, which in this case is random read. So it's doing the random read workload. And the work of VMs that we just deployed start sending us back telemetry. Uh, you can you can actually see this through the Prometheus server that we ship with X-ray, but right now we're just going to use the standard um, the standard UI. Unfortunately, in my screen capture, this this is cut off a little bit. But at any rate, you can see here I'm doing this random read workload, and I'm getting about a million IOPS off of four nodes, which is pretty reasonable. So it's doing that, and. One of the nice things about X-Ray is you kind of get this timeline. So we see that the workload ramps up and then it reaches a steady state of about a million IOPS and it stays there for the duration of the test. So nothing weird happens. Um, but if you were doing a power test, let's say, and you were running a random read and then you powered off one of those, obviously you'd expect to see some kind of dip in performance here. So the, one of the things we do in X-Ray again is to show you a timeline so that as you inject failures or you inject competing workloads, you can see the impact. In this case, we're not doing any of that. We just run this workload in isolation. So we get a fairly nice straight line, ramps up. And at the end, you see that tailing off. That's just because as we stop, the, I've, got, I've got many VMs running on this thing. And as I kill all the workloads, it doesn't all stop uh, at exactly the same time. So you see that, you see that kind of curve there. So the next thing we do, we do a sequential read workload. And again, you see the ramp up. In this case, the X axis is in gigabytes per second. So on four nodes here, I'm doing uh, about 20 gigabytes per second. So the, what's that? Five gigabytes per second per node. So again, pretty quick. Um, you see the ramp up, uh, decent steady state, and then a ramp down. So, so far we've got two of our four corners done. We wait a little bit between each phase just to kind of let things settle down if there's anything happening. Um, 
and then we'll move on to the next one, which I think is random right, if I remember correctly. Let's see, so X-Ray is executing all these tests for me. You can see at the very top of the screen the different steps. So yeah, it is, it is running the random right workload, and shortly that chart will start populating in my UI, and I can see what my random right performance looks like. And here we go. Okay, so let's say 450, almost half a million write ops. Um, so not as fast as the reads, so that's very typical. Obviously, on the read side, we're having to replicate that across two nodes. So every IO has to go across the wire. Whereas with reads, we just read that data lo locally. So it's uh, typical and expected that the random reads will be quite a bit faster than the random writes, and indeed they are here. The last one we'll see, oh, I, I, this is interesting, at the bottom here you'll see the CPU usage. So as we do I.O., of course, it consumes some CPU and during the wait periods when it's not doing anything, the, the CPU uh, drops right down to almost nothing. So here's our write test executing now, it's the last one in, the, in this set. Um, if you remember the reads, we were able to get about 20 gigabytes across the cluster. This is going to be much less because now my write throughput, I'm actually bounded by the network that my clusters are connected to because I have to replicate the every single write across nodes. I can't go faster than the network. So in this case, my network speed is about uh, 8 gigabytes per second um, uh, aggregated across the cluster. So that's finished. I've got my four corners, that's all good. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to generate a report. So if you're testing this to give to somebody else, you can actually create a report and it has a lot of nice text in there that tells uh, the reader exactly what this test is doing uh, and the results. So this is something that you can, you can pass around rather than having to do screenshots. So, so this is a nice little feature. Uh, it gives us some info there. And here you'll see basically this is a copy of the charts that you saw on the UI. So there's my roughly million IOPS, there's my roughly 20 gigabytes per second. Um, okay, so show me random writes about 380,000 there. So anyway, so that's all good. You could go print that out, do whatever you like. So that, that's X-ray, that's, that's the easy kind of button there to do the four corners test. And what we see here is just a full range of other tests that we have in X-ray. So there's all sorts of different things you can do. Here are some of the failure testing, some vMotion, high availability. Uh, some cross-cluster stuff here. Um, so that's uh, that's X-ray. Thank you.